So tell me about the communication. Sure. Obvi obviously, there were multiple times of conflicts happening uh, with Russia. How does that work? You're responding and at the same time a liaison, one of your uh, subordinates on your team is on the phone at the same time with his counterpart in the Kremlin. How does that work and what type of message do you convey? How does that go back and forth to prevent this from going Dr. Strangelove? <laughs> uh, at the very top, so Secretary of Defense to Secretary of Defense, there is, in fact, a hotline, as you've always heard. So it's not the red phone, what is it? It's the blue phone, it's, what? It's not actually red, it's, okay. it's a black phone. Okay. And uh, you should ask Secretary Gates this. Eh. But the, the principal immediate channel um, at the strategic level is at the Secretary of Defense's level. Below that, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, um, currently General Joe Dunford, uh, could speak to his counterpart. That's not a standing hotline, but the ability to communicate immediately is always available through the command centers. Um, and I would call that the, if you will, the operational level between the two nations. And then in the NATO sense, the front line. as the NATO commander, um, you also have the ability to speak immediately to your counterpart in Moscow. I also traveled to Moscow on multiple occasions to meet with my counterpart. I invited them to NATO. That's the kind of communication that we need to continue. Mm -hmm. Even as we have disagreement and confrontation and challenges and difficulty, all of that, we still need to have that ability to defuse a situation. But, but just without giving out too much, when you're on your jet and there is a confrontation, how do you convey in a very, very stern, no more carrot way to your Russian counterpart without making the situation worse, without adding kerosene yeah. to the fire? You how, have do, how, do you, how do you convey? You have several good ways of doing that. In the immediate moment, um, you have the ability to reach down to your air commander, mm -hmm. like you had General Welsh here. Mm -hmm. Before he was the chief of the Air Force, General Welsh was my commander in, in uh, Europe, in NATO. So you have the ability as the NATO commander to go to your air commander and say, hey, General Welsh, get on the phone with a Russian air commander and tell him this is wildly inappropriate, cease and desist. So you've got that immediate tactical response. As the operational commander, you can then pick up the phone either in real time or that evening or the next morning and call your counterpart and say, you know what happened yesterday? That's unbelievably dangerous. That cannot continue. Um, and then you can also go to your boss. So I could go to the Secretary General of NATO or to the Secretary of Defense of the United States. You report to two hats and you say to them, boss, this is really out of hand, what we're seeing over the Baltics, please get on the phone and talk to your counterpart. Worst case, you can bump it up to the president, and the president can call President Putin. That would be pretty extraordinary for a tactical event, but when the two of them meet, the president, our president, is loaded with talking points to say to Putin, hey, Vladimir, you know, this is not good business, and it's going to lead to a very bad result. So you kind of have multiple levels. You need to be consistent in the message. You need to be aligned in the message. And you need to continue to hammer it home. Otherwise, we are going to have an incident that leads us to a very dramatic and unfortunate outcome.